Hello everyone, so today I'm going to talk about the history of Korean literature. First, we will define Korean literature as a distinct literature developed and transmitted from the ancient times by the people known as Koreans through the Korean language. Korean literature germinated between the first prehistoric settlements by the Koreans on the Korean Peninsula and the emergence of flor and flourishing of these ancient Korean states. Early Korean literature was heavily influenced by shamanism, Confucianism, and Buddhism. The early Korean literature began as an oral tradition which depicted love of nature and man and held that man was part of nature. The earliest literature before 57 BC. Poetry and music have played an important part in the daily life of the Korean people during the earliest times. Ancient Korean songs were performed in rituals such as worshipping the heaven in the north and the sowing and harvesting festivals in the south. These songs were transmitted orally and were thought to have magical properties. The introduction of Buddhism and Chinese characters to the three kingdoms enriched their literature and changed their worldview greatly. In consequence, their artistic activity advanced far beyond collective singing and dancing to the direct expression of individual feelings. The heroes of this literature were human beings with individual personalities in contrast to the more idealized tribal hero heroes of earliest times. The three kingdoms of this period were Kogoryo in the north, Pekchi in the southwest, and Shila in the southeast. The poems during the Kogoryo kingdom tended to be heroic tales in epic form, while the literature of Pekchi and Shila tended to be lyric. After the mid 7th century, Shila absorbed Kogoryo and Pekchi and created a stable political system covering most of the Korean peninsula. Myanga was the crown of Sheila's literary achievement. Although the term Myanga is used generally to distinguish Korean songs from Chinese poetry, it more specifically denotes the 25 extant poems transcribed in the newly devised Yangchal system in the unified Sheila and early Koryo periods. The new poetic form that flourished during the Koryo period was the Pilgok. It was intended for large-scale performances, and many pyolgok were written and performed by women. Examples were Tongdong, or Ode on the Seasons, and Isanggok, or The Winter Night. The literature of the early Joseon period from 1392 to 1598. Yi Dynasty falls naturally into two periods with the end of the Japanese invasion in 1597. The early period is notable for its poetry and later for its prose. The early Yi dynasty also marks the initiation of a new era in Korean literary history with the invention of Hangul in 1443 to 1444 during the reign of King Sejo. The two most important forms of Yi dynasty is Sejo and Kasa. The brief and simple Sejo were perfect vehicles for intense lyrical expression whereas the longer kasa gave writers an opportunity to expound at greater length on the more practical aspects of Confucian thought. The literature of the later Chosun period, from 1598 to 1894. The shift in emphasis from poetry to prose after the Japanese invasion represents a significant step in the evolution toward modern literature. It also reflects a basic change in the philosophical outlook of Korean society. The Yi dynasty had suffered from the rigid formalism of Confucian officials, whose doctrine was based on the principles of the 12th century Chinese philosopher Cho Shi. This neo Confucian philosophy was gradually replaced by the Sirak or Silak, or the practice learning school, which was based on reason and the scientific spirit of criticism. Practice learning gave impetus to literary activity and awakened the self-consciousness of the people. Poetry, which has been the monopoly of the lettered class, 
came to be written by the common people. Women also were admitted into the literary world as the principal audience for traditional fiction. The later active compilation of Siju and prose narratives reveals the awakening interest in rediscovering and reappraising the past. Poetic forms of Korea Korean poetry originally was meant to be sung, and its styles and forms reflect its melodic origins. There are four major traditional poetic forms in Korea. The first one is the Hyanga, or the native songs. It is the oldest poetic form of Korea. The poems were written in four, eight, or ten lines. The next one is the Pyolgok, or the special songs, or Changa, the long poems. Pyolgok or Changa flourished during the Middle and Late Koryo dynasty. It is characterized by a refrain either in the middle or at the end of each stanza. The third one is Sihu. It is the longest enduring and most popular form of Korean poetry. And the last one is Kasa, which verses borrowed the forms of Chinese lyric poetry and rhyme prose. Other poetic forms that flourish briefly include the Kyonggi style in the 14th and 15th centuries and the Akang or words for songs in the 15th century. Now let us move on to Korean prose. Korean prose literature can be divided into narratives, which includes myths, legends, and folk tales found in the written records. The principal sources of these narratives are two great historical records compiled during the Korea dynasty, which is the Sangguk Gagi and the Sangguk Kyusa. Many of the Korean myths and folk tales were introduced through shamanism, with the belief that spirits possess objects on earth. You might have recognized some of the Korean myths that have been adapted in K-dramas, but there are actually more to what has been shown in those dramas. Number one is Dokhaibei, or Goblin. Unlike the goblin who takes the form of a good-looking man and known as the great and lonely god in the Korean drama Goblin, in the myth are normal, they are normally portrayed as demonic-looking creatures with horns. They are mostly harmless despite of their monstrous appearance. Next is the Gumiho, or the nine-tailed fox, known as an evil creature in Korean myths and folk tales. They live up to... 1,000 years and takes a form of a beautiful girl who seduces men and feed on their hearts and livers. Next is the Samjoko, or known as the Three-Legged Crow. This symbolized power in the Goguryeo dynasty and was believed to live in the sun. They are worshipped as sun gods. And the last that I'm going to share to you is the Haitei or the Haichi, known as the lion with scales and horn on its head. It's something you'll often see when you visit Seoul, and it's been a symbol of Seoul since 2009. It symbolizes justice and punishes those who are wrong with its horns. It is also found on historical landmarks like Guanghuan Moon. Now let's move on to folk tales. Folk tales are steeped in Buddhism, most of it, and the philosophical teachings of Confucius. These are often good and evil spirits which help give benefits to the righteous or seek retribution for wrongdoings. Two famous Korean folk tales with a common theme, people suffering because of their own actions and of filial piety, are the magpie and the bell, which talks about a young student who killed a snake to stop it from taking the life of a magpie and being saved by the help of magpies. The other folktale is the young man and the wild ginseng, 
which talks about sacrifices and the value of doing anything to help our parents. Hello, I'm Grace. So, let's talk about the oral literature of Korea. First, let us define oral literature. Oral literature means literature that has been transmitted by word of mouth, thus distinguished from literature transmitted through written records. The Koreans created a rich oral tradition throughout their long history. And as the literature of the masses, it took deep roots, becoming an important part of the cultural heritage of the Korean people, as well as part of their belief system. Although certain segments of oral literature has been written down in the 12th and 13th centuries, it was after the 15th century that much of Korea's oral literature was transformed into written literature, creating a new cultural heritage. Nonetheless, most literature of oral tradition remained as a genre as it was in the past. Oral literature in Korea may be divided into three categories, namely narratives, songs, and sayings. They may be then be subdivided as follows. Narratives consist of myths, legends, and folk tales, while the songs consist of folk songs, shaman songs, and pansori. And lastly, sayings, that is consisting of proverbs, riddles, taboos, and auspicious words. In general then, literature written in Korea falls into three categories, namely works written in the early transcription systems, those written in Hangul, and those written in Chinese. The picture on the screen is the example of Hangul. Koreans are also fond of mass plays. The most representative plays are the Sunday cook genre of Yangju, the Pyolusin Kut of Haho, and the Okwang Day Nori. These mass plays are usually a five-actor play. Koreans also love puppet shows, namely Kok Takak Sinori, also called Pak Jom Chi Kuk, or Old Pak's Play. Koreans are also known for their famous traditional pansori. It is a story singing folk literature evolved from legends. Here is the example. So that's the end of it. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. Bye. Annyeonghaseyo. This is May, and in this video, we will talk about how you or Korean wave. How you, the rise of the modern Korean literature. What is how you? Hallyu is a Chinese term that when translated, it literally means Korean wave. It is the global popularity of South Korea's cultural economy, sporting pop culture, entertainment, music, TV dramas, and movies. The growth of the Korean wave. Korean musical theater. Korean theater goers have recently begun to pay more attention to musical comedies presented on theater stages. The increased demand for good quality musicals has resulted in the performance of world-famous musicals such as Jekyll and Hyde, Chicago and Cats, either by the regional or Korean teams, and the production of new musicals written and directed by Korean talent. K-drama or Korean drama the entertainment products like movies, music, and dramas have all been described as having excellent production quality. K-dramas became so popular not just in Asia but in the whole world, and this gave birth to the rise of the talented famous Korean artists today. K-pop or Korean pop One era that is growing more rapidly than any other is 21st century K-pop, which spans dance pop, pop ballads, techno, rock, hip-hop, R&B, and so on. The rise of K-pop on the global stage is probably best presented by Sai's Gangnam Style, which swept the whole world as soon as it was released in the late 2012. 
Over the recent years, K-pop acts have experienced a change of generations from second generation idols Big Bang and Girls Generation to the third generation idols like BTS, XO, Blackpink, who actively utilize social media. The K-pop genre has also diversified with the emergence of the indie scenes. The popularity of K-pop singers is largely based on their excellent vocal abilities, dazzling stage presence, and well-choreographed, impeccable dance performances, among with other things.